Well, it's been about a year since Topaz Photo AI came out, not quite summer 2022, we're almost there. But when I first talked about it, it wasn't quite where denoise was, especially I'm mostly talking about noise reduction here. It wasn't quite where denoise was. So I thought here we are almost a year later and I would do a comparison between denoise and photo AI when it comes to noise reduction. Uh, which one is better? Which one is you know worth spending your time on? Which one should you invest in your workflow? So let's jump over to Photoshop here. So what I've got is just a bunch of images that I put on layers here. I'm not gonna walk you through running noise reduction on all of them just because that would be, I think, too time consuming. So I'll show you what I did. I opened up a photo, uh, I opened them up into Photoshop. I know Topaz recommends that you should open the raw photo directly into that. That's never gonna be me. Um, I'm a Lightroom user and I'm not gonna interrupt my workflow by opening it up. I've done the test for me. It's not worth it to do that. Of course, you should always do the test for you. And if you find a difference that's big enough, you should change. But for me, I'm gonna start in Lightroom first. Open it up in Photoshop, and you can run these from, from Lightroom as well as plugins. It's just it's easier for me to compare layers in Photoshop. So what I did is made uh, two copies. And for one copy, uh, for a denoise copy, I went up to the filter menu and I went to denoise. And I generally just picked the best one. I have it in four up view, which gives you four different models that they have here. And I just generally have to trust me that, that I picked what I thought was the best one and I just left it on uh, the model preferences here. I just left it on basically the auto AI chosen preferences that it has. I chose the best one from there, okay? And I just did uh, the noise reduction. And then I did the same thing for photo AI. I made another copy of the layer without doing anything to it, went into photo AI and did the same thing. Photo AI doesn't have all those different models in it. And, and to me, you may view that as a strong point or you may not, but inside of Photo AI, I just went in and just let it do the noise reduction. And noise reduction typically does a little bit of sharpening. You can see it's got a detail adjustment there. So it does a little bit of sharpening on top of it, just like denoise does as well. So I just let that go with the defaults, okay? Alrighty, so let's get back over to our layers and let's do some pixel peeping to see what we find. So we'll zoom in on this one here. And this is our original photo, okay? And then this is the Topaz Denoise version. This is the Photo AI version. Again, Denoise, Photo AI, pretty close. I mean, it's, it's negligible, right? I see a little bit of a, some a little bit of a blocky background here with the photo AI version versus the denoise versions a little bit smoother. Now, would anybody ever see that in the real world? Absolutely not. If I back out to a normal real world view, you know, you you would just never see it. You can tell there's a slight difference back there, but you never actually be able to see it or pay attention to it. And if somebody did, you failed as a photographer because that's not what they should be looking at. The edges seem a little bit odd to me too. And I found the photo AI edges, I thought overall looked better. Um, they get a little bit crispy on some of the edges there. So again, they both look they both look different. It's gonna be personal taste on which one you like better. So I can't say uh, it's necessarily um, definitely one or the other one. Okay, we'll go on to the next ones here. So here is, let's zoom in a little bit. Here's our original zoom in one more level. Here's our denoise. Here's photo AI. Denoise, photo AI. To me, pretty clear, right? I mean, I think denoise leaves the background a little worse. I think photo AI just looks better and I think it actually adds a uh, better crisp or sharpness to the photo. Again, the edges get a little bit crispy on some places, but at normal view, you're never ever gonna see that. It's just gonna look like a sharp photo. I, I also wanna try to try to get ahead of some of the questions that I know are gonna come out here. So um, one of them is gonna be, you know, why are we just talking about wildlife photography? There's also, you know, I get the question, there's other apps out there, you know, what should you use? A uh, really quick, very, very quick word from our sponsor, super fast. Uh, one thing, if you like, if you're using Topaz and you're interested, I do have a Topaz deep dive course that covers the individual apps as well as photo AI. And also Topaz is running a special on their software right now. So you wanna take advantage of that. If you need to if you need to buy it or you need to re-up, now's a good time to do it. You get a really good discount. I would really appreciate if you use my links to do that. It doesn't cost you a penny and I get a little bit of an affiliate commission. So that would help out, okay? Um, so the question, so why just wildlife? Well, that's all I really have to compare it to. You know, fast action, low light wildlife, noise reduction is a part of life. 
your ISOs will always be high for that fast action low light. So noise reduction is a part of life that's a very important part of my workflow. That's what I'm talking about. Um, why, you know, sports, low light events, I don't do them, but hopefully you saw how I compare them so you can do your own comparisons. Uh, night photography, I'm probably sleeping. Landscape photography, I'm gonna be on a tripod at ISO 100. So sharp nar, noise, noise is not an issue at that point. Um, why are we talking about just noise? Why not sharpening and upsizing what they have individual apps for as well as Photo AI covers it. It's mainly because the noise reduction does all the sharpening I need. I don't really have a sharpening step. And if I do have a blurry photo, can sharpening help? Kind of, but I, I consider it a failure. If I have a blurry photo, it's a failure. And no matter how much I try to use these apps to sharpen it, it still looks weird. It looks artificial to me. I consider it a failure. It doesn't, it doesn't hold up to what I want it to look like, so I'm never really happy with it. So I don't really consider sharpening to be a necessary step because the noise reduction does it. And then as far as upsizing, uh, I believe honestly Photoshop is, is the best. I've, again, I've done the comparisons for me and Photoshop is as good or better in some cases and so much easier than trying to use it inside of a plugin. Another question is, why are we just talking Topaz? There are other apps out there that do this stuff because this is what I use, okay? I'm not gonna confuse it by talking about other apps. You lots of reviews out there. Feel free to try them on your own. I know DxO has an app that's similar and I know On One has uh, something that's similar. Um, again, for me, my workflow, what I do, what I like from an app, Topaz fits for me better. I've done the tests and I find I get the results that I want from it. So there's no reason for me to change, but of course you should always do the tests on your own. Let's get back to the rest of the photos. Next up, we have a juvenile eagle. And so this is our original photo. This is our Topaz Denoise photo. And then this is our photo AI photo. I think overall photo AI does better. It does better on the noise reduction, does better on making it look a little bit sharper. Again, keep in mind, we're zoomed into 300%. We're really pixel peeping. It's gonna look a little blocky, a um, little, little bit pixelated because we're zoomed in so far. But I think photo AI, that's Denoise. That's photo AI. Again, photo AI is better. The only part I feel like Denoise won a little bit on this one is some of the texture on the feathers here. I'm gonna to try to zoom in so you can see that, but that's photo AI, that's Denoise. I do like Denoise a little bit better on there, but keep in mind, I also use the auto settings and you can push, pull and tweak these things and they also do have masking with them. So I think that's important to know because um, we, I could probably get the photo AI setting to, to look more like this if I needed to. Moving on to our next one here. Again, we're gonna zoom in on the key part. So this is our original. This is the Denoise version. Photo AI, hold on. Denoise, Photo AI. Denoise, Photo AI. I think Photo AI wins this one. Um, that's Denoise. That's Photo AI. I think it makes it look overall sharper. It does leave a couple of funky edges around here where maybe Denoise doesn't leave them, but Denoise gets a little bit artifacty and blocky around some of those places too. So it's it's really, again, gonna come down to personal preference. And then just keep in mind, look at this like normal people would, at a level like this. And I mean, they're, they're virtually identical. If not, Photo AI tends to look a little bit sharper. But again, you could probably tweak Denoise to get there if you needed to. And then I'll finish up with a, a, a Kingfisher here. So what I did is I, I did all three. I did sharpening, noise reduction, and upsizing on both of these photos. Unfortunately, I don't have the original photo to show you, and it'd be hard to show you because it would be smaller, so you wouldn't be able to overlay them on top of each other. But I can tell you, to me, this was a very, very clear winner, okay? Again, I did noise reduction, sharpening and upsizing. I think I doubled the size of the photo because it was a pretty tight crop. So this is the Topaz individual app version where I did denoise, sharpen, and gigapixel all in one or you know after each other. And the order doesn't matter, so I would always do upsizing at the end, but and then this is photo AI. And that's pretty like to me there's no question which one is better on this one here. So again, this is the individual app version. This is Photo AI doing noise reduction, sharpening, and upsizing. Let's we'll zoom into an area here. Again, this is the individual app 
version, running them all separately, and then this is using Photo AI. To me, when you're doing all three of them, that, that is a more than clear winner that the, uh, that the Photo AI won. So where does that leave us? Um, I, I believe uh, Topaz Denoise is dead. And I believe it for a couple of reasons. Number one, Topaz themselves. They've come out and said that the they are not developing the individual apps anymore and all of the development and new features and research is going to Photo AI. If you've been uh, a customer of the individual apps, you've already seen that. Um, number two, I just believe from my own, from my own use that it is better. Uh, that photo AI is better. Denoise does have a little bit more control, but I had my favorites and I found I would do the same thing over and over again. So I had the control, but I wasn't really using it. I think it's overall photo AI is a faster, cleaner, easier program to use. If you're gonna do sharpening and any image upsizing, you can get it all in one. So uh, I don't really believe that there's a reason to continue using the individual apps. As I mentioned, they do have a sale uh, that is going on. It might not be when you watch this video, but uh, there is a good sale going on and I would really appreciate it if you'd use my link it's in the description there so it doesn't cost you a penny and I get a little extra something from it lastly here's a great video to go to next uh, this one talks about my workflow in noise reduction do I do it first or do I do it last and that can be a pretty controversial topic um, when it comes to that stuff but a lot of people have their own views on it but hopefully uh, that video can help out if you're looking for something to watch next